Coming up right now, see why the Golden Arches have many fast food consumers digging deep into their pockets. Also coming up, a mother comes to blows with her son's ex, but why? Hmm. Seriously, why? And a little bit later <laughs> on, we've all seen them, the funny Florida man oh. memes, but what if I told you they have inspired a new competition? We got the details. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English welcoming you to a Tuesday edition of a Daily Flash. So Tuesday. glad to have you here. Hey, of course, we're joined by Matt Doolittle. Hi, Matt, Maddie. how's it going? Man? It's going great, Mitch. And, you know, on my carnival cruise, if you could direct me to the closest buffet. I'd All right. It. Okay. You know, the jacket. This was my new season jacket. I love the jacket. Thank you. I, I get comments either that way <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I, do. I look like a wedding coordinator. <laughs> you look like a carnival cruise director. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm going with. Or carnival. Okay. Yeah, okay. I love, love boat. Carnival cruise. Love boat. I can yeah, buy it. I that. love boat. Uh, speaking of travel. Uh, would you invest in a neighbor-free seat on an airline if the option was available? Well, so meaning uh, there would be nobody to sit in that neck? One hundred percent. You know, if it's affordable, sure, mm -hmm. I, I would handle it. Qantas that. Airlines is doing a new program now in America, where if you take certain flights in the U.S. for an extra one hundred fifty bucks, roughly, okay. you can get a neighbor-free seat option. Okay, now for long flights, yes. that would make sense. Like, yeah. if, especially if you're going down to Australia, yeah. I, 150 bucks is not bad yeah, at all. Not bad at all. And, and you know, with all the crazy uh, computers out there, they could figure that out. Like, well, this seat, uh, we can move this person here and make this a uh, neighbor-free seat and that sort of thing. Here's the problem, though. This happened to me on a flight once before. Okay. Like, they had said, "Look, we'll just keep this row for you, so you can have a." Because I was a frequent flyer, so it comes with a few extra Certainly. perks. One of those flights that was packed. So a guy was sitting in a middle seat. He didn't want to sit in the middle seat anymore. And he came and that sat happens. right in the row. So you're going to have that option. So how do you approach that conversation? Like, I paid extra for nobody to sit next that to me. That makes a very good point. Right? Yeah. How do you have that conversation? I guess other than announcements, making yeah. an announcement, or you would yeah. have to complain, right? Yes. Like, and I would. If I'm paying 150 bucks, right. yeah. They, I guess if they don't, they might go, well, it's you don't have a neighbor to you. The middle seat's open, at least. You know, I, I could see him yes, make some kind of exactly. deal in that, all right? Well, it might make you a little unhappy, but how about a real unhappy meal at McDonald's? Mm. Well, they've actually reported revenue was up 14% in the last quarter. Congratulations! That's a surge in the burger giants. Uh, it said that they was all driven by strategic menu price increases. The Golden Arches brought in more than $6 billion in revenue for one quarter, beating the previous expectations. However, McDonald's, which has about 13,000 restaurants in the United States and over 38,000 across the globe, they didn't disclose just how much they've increased their franchising prices. One branch in Connecticut right now, because you have to pay for franchises, say you're a McDonald's, mm -hmm. uh, is charging, and, and we're not making this up, $18 mm -hmm. for a Big Mac combo. Oh, it comes with all kinds of stuff. No, we're just talking about a combo. You got the hamburger, you got the fries, and you got a soft drink. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the same combo will run you about $13.69 at McDonald's if you're in Times Square. Many consumers say the recent spike in fast food prices no longer makes the fast casual food worth it. I tend to agree. I mean, if, if you're good, you, yeah. it's good, fast, and cheap, and you know all those things that you're going to get. Uh, it's not healthy for you. We know that. So why not spend the money somewhere like the, the handmade salad or something? Right. Well, so here's the issue, and, and this is also happening in California, where they have forced the minimum wage for fast food worker jobs yep. up to $20, $25 an hour. So when you when you force companies to pay $25 an hour for somebody who makes fries or cooks in the back, then you're going to have to raise the menu prices to accommodate that, or you're going to have to put in those self-serve kiosks, exactly. which is also happening. And then if you start complaining about the self-serve kiosks, well... You can blame, you know, your lawmakers for forcing these companies to pay fast food workers $25 an hour. Now, people will argue, look, I can't make a living off of a fast food job. Initially, those jobs were not meant to be permanent, full-time, exactly. salaried career jobs. They were meant to kind of help college kids or young adults get started in life. And we're now with the AI and robotic. Yes. I've, I've already seen it. I have a robotic uh, hamburger. Make, yeah. It flips it over and looks, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. like that, whatever. And 
uh, you never, you can only blame yourself if you screw up the order when you go up to the kiosk <laughs> thing. So I feel safer about using the yeah. kiosk. It, it, uh, I, I do freak out a little bit because I think about all the other people that have oh, touched no. it. So I'm like one of these guys doing that. But sort don't of you thing. remember when fast food and you and I kind of grew up in the same time where fast food was really expensive? It was a luxury to it, go to a Taco Bell or a McDonald's at it, one point. In my family, it always yeah. was that way. We had five kids, and so my dad was like, man, you know, even back in the 70s and such, uh, we went to a taco place one time, and my dad, my dad grew up in the Depression. So you he, he don't need soft drinks, just use the water fountain. And we're eating hot tacos. So we're like running back and forth in the water. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't blame that. When I became a father, I realized, man, this but is Taco expensive. Bell was a treat because it was really expensive. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the you know ninety nine cent taco you get now. It was like four ninety nine for a taco back then, and that was expensive. It, it was the uh, answer to mom not e not having to cook. Yes, is exactly. really what it, even like pizza delivery was the whole reason yeah. behind that as well. Well, a fifty year old mother has proved that age is just a number by knocking out her son's. 19-year-old ex-girlfriend in a what? very bizarre mixed martial arts event in Poland. Many fight fans were shocked to hear the mom, who goes by the name Gosha Magical, was planning a cage fight <laughs> against her son's ex-girlfriend. The mom, who found fame online making videos with her streamer son, proved she was up to the task and defeated her much younger opponent by a knockout with a flurry of punches. The fighting novice surprised everyone with her technique and composure. The Polish promotion wow. company hosting the event, known for staging outlandish, about. Uh, okay. The referee was forced to end the fight as her opponent suffered a series of blows while the crowd cheered them on. Viewers described the scene as horrific and absurd. Okay, there, there is a, a wing, wingspan difference there between the two. So yeah. I mean, but but I think it was all motivated by you hurt my boy <laughs> uh, or something happened. You know what I'm saying? And that that had to play into that. But I, you know, until the end, we found out it was this is what this company does. Yeah. But even still, I, like, there's a couple boys that dated my daughter. I wouldn't. <laughs> But they they beat the crap out of me. <laughs> that you take out. Yeah, no, but I, I get hammers and, uh, you know, uh -huh. bats and stuff, and you have to fight me with your hands. It was I'm up to my mom. She had a fight pit out back. So <laughs> That's just, how you just, grew up, right? That's how I grew up with a fight pit <laughs> out back, so. It was filled with jello too, I understand. Uh, 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 that's yeah, another right. story. That's another show. It's another show. It's really another show. show. Floridians will... There's so much there, y'all. <laughs> Floridians will soon have the opportunity to prove they are the best state has to offer in the new Florida Man Games. Oh, baby Christmas. It's a competition. <laughs> it's based in the headline-inspired Florida Man memes. Events will kick off uh, February 24th in St. Augustine. Games include the weaponized pool noodle mud duel, the evading arrest obstacle course, <laughs> the category five cash grab. Sounds about right. This is the one I'm looking forward to. The beer belly Florida sumo. Trout's gonna participate. Trout, yeah, Trout, our camera uh -huh. two operator. And a head-to-head -head race called a catalytic converter, two bikes, and a handful <laughs> of copper pipes. We're not making this up. So Sanford. <laughs> Sanford, Florida. Florida American Gladiator, or former Florida uh, American Gladiators, Dan Nitro Clark and Lori Ice Petrick will actually judge the competition. Registration is now open. If you're wanting to know about Florida. You want Florida, to see what Florida man looks like. Just search out right here. That, that's that's, that's, that's your man. guy right here. Aww, that is Florida man to trout. approve. Trout, ah. you, 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 which competition? You think the cow like converted to do well with? Mud duel. Mud duel. I take mud duel as okay. well. Um, I got a hundred on trout and mud duel. Yeah, I'll put my money on trout. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so some about, about Florida. The further north you go in Florida, the deeper south. The deeper you south are. you are. So mm -hmm. the Panhandle and St. Augustine is right there. Yep. Uh, well, by the way, the oldest city in, in the United States. Beautiful. And uh, is right up there along I-10. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Know that, that not all of Florida is Florida, man, no. but we get, and keep in mind, I want to remind everybody, where does everybody go when they retire and want to move away from those states? They yep, come down they come to, to Florida. Florida. The land, they, they used to call Florida the land of the nearly dead and the newlywed. Newlywed and nearly dead, yes. <laughs> it, it's, it's great to live here. I mean, yeah. I can see why you'd we want to. We can't complain, but it is very true. Well, rest in peace to the single life of Vanessa Hudgens, the 34-year-old actress threw a funeral-themed bachelorette party to mourn her days of dating as she gets ready to marry baseball player Cole Tucker. Okay. The bride-to-be donned a white silk and lace wedding-like gown with her gaggle of six gal pals sporting all black ensembles with a traditional funeral veil. The iconic black and white night was part of her recent bachelorette trip to Aspen, Colorado. Hudgens and her fiance got engaged in late 2022. However, the singer didn't reveal she said yes to the athlete's proposal until February when she was spotted wearing a humongous diamond engagement ring. I'm not sure what this says about the future of their marriage, but 
there could be something to question and, and there. And the difference between like well, girls' bachelorette parties and then bachelor parties is that yes, we are organized. We're, if we a bachelor party is very organized, but it looks very unorganized. Yes. And the first thing that uh, bachelorette parties do is they buy those hats with the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the phallic symbols. So my fiance is going to Key the West the this weekend they for all hers. They all want to match. So. Yeah. What did you say, Maddie? My fiance is going to Key West this weekend See, for hers. So, so she's doing that. Yeah. And then you and me, hey, Matt yeah. be like, hey, you, you coming? You want to go play golf? <laughs> Let's go play golf. You ready to go do that? So that we'll see that. would be your place of golf. Yeah, yeah. And I liked it. When we did my, I just like, I just want to have fun with my boys. That's all. Yeah. I didn't really plan anything out. So think that. No well, matching outfits. No matching outfits. We do have Daily Flash, though, and that's more of it coming up after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. When it comes to the U.S. economy, it feels as though everything is upside down. From the roller coaster ride of inflation to the skyrocketing costs of groceries, housing, and interest rates. Joining us now is real estate guru Dean Rogers to help us get a handle on our finances. Dean, welcome to Daily Flash. Hey, thanks for having me. So let's start with this. What's going on with the economy right now? Well, the past couple years, we've seen a hyperinflationary market. Uh, because of low inventory and historically low interest rates. We've never seen money uh, so readily available to, to the market. And uh, we especially saw that in real estate as we saw home prices skyrocket. And for the first time, we saw a pullback the second half of 2022 uh, because the Fed started to introduce rate increases. And because the inventory continued to stay low, 2023, we saw it continue to rise, but now because interest rates continue to be increased by the Fred, we're starting to see a little bit of a pullback. Yeah, what is the true impact of, infl of inflation on our economy right now? Well, inflation does two things. Uh, first, in the real estate market, it makes the, the market go up, uh, but it also makes consumer goods go up as well. So really what it's done is it's created a, an affordability problem. And you mentioned interest rates. The Federal Reserve has a big role in the current state of our economy right now. Should we be worried about the moves they're making, especially with the constant gradual increase with interest rates? Yeah, well, the Fed, I mean, their job is really to, to keep the flow of money healthy between businesses, consumers. And uh, the Fed has really been forced to increase rates to, to try to control inflation. I mean, it's just inflation has been going crazy. And uh, and so specifically for real estate, they've they've done that in an effort to to bring the prices down. And uh, we're, we're really in a unique situation right now because a healthy market for real estate is one point two million dollar one point two million homes for sale. And right now we have right around four hundred thousand. So we're at about a third of what a healthy market inventory looks like. And um, so we're, we're in a very interesting position right now. I guess a lot of people are concerned about what happened in 2008 happening again, especially with the state of things. And I know a lot of things are starting to really slow down in the real estate market. Are dropping rents an indicator of what might be to come? Yeah, you know, I keep shaking my crystal ball to see what's going to happen here. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell, but, uh, you know, resale rents, just like home prices, skyrocket. Too. I mean, some some place, some markets, 30, 40 percent. I know here in San Diego, in my local market, uh, I saw that happen right in front of my eyes. And so I think it's a natural adjustment for rents to, to kind of adjust and come back down. Um, but it's hard, hard to know what's going to happen because as inventory stays low, as the majority of America refinanced at 4 percent interest rates or lower, that they're not going to be selling their houses. So inventory for the rental market is going to continue to be low as well. So the prices could be forced up there as well. We're seeing this happening in Florida too, because you, you can't afford to buy a house with the interest rates, but yet the rents right. are just astronomical too. What can we do in the midst of chaos in the current state of the economy? Do we just sort of hunker down and wait for it to pass over or do we actively get involved? Yeah, this is really important. So I, I think people were comfortable um, with the flow of money in the market the past several years. But what people need to understand is they need to be ready for opportunity. Uh, I know as a real estate investor myself, you know, I'm continuing to focus on smart deals only. I'm not trying to over leverage. Um, I'm looking at short time horizons. I'm not looking at projects that are going to take a long time. 
And people need to keep their debt as low as possible right now. Uh, you know, we have an election coming up. We have global global conflicts with war, lots of interesting things at play. So I think the best things people can do is to, to be tight with their money um, and be ready for opportunity. Terrific advice, Dean. Thanks so much for joining us. For more info on how to navigate the rough waters of the economy, head to Dean's website, deanrogers.com. Very nice. We go on now to tell you it's never too late to do anything you'd like. Meet the 71-year-old DJ who encourages others all to dance to your own music. At 71 years old, Brian Phoenix, he's not slowing down either. The longtime DJ has been spinning tracks for the past four decades. He recently went viral after someone shared a video clip of him working at her friend's wedding. The post included the caption, went to a wedding and they had the cutest old DJ who used his CD collection for all his music. <laughs> Phoenix said that he is amazed how people have seen and responded. Take a look. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody reaching out, all the kind words, all the nice things everybody said. And to everybody that's older, thinking about retirement, where you say, I still like what I do and I'm pretty good at it. Keep going. Keep going. Do what you feel. I feel 71. I feel I'm as young as I can be. I think I'm on top of my game. I love doing it. I love playing at weddings. If you do something and you love doing it, you're getting older, keep doing it. Don't stop because someone else said so. You dance to your own music. If you want to keep going, keep going. And to everybody that viewed the video and to everybody that had all the kind words they had to say, thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you at somebody's wedding pretty soon. Thank you. I love that. That's Absolutely love that. You know, and it is says something, hey, pulling out the CDs. That's a little bit, you know, with the vinyl, you know, you, the records and everything, yeah. then with CD. Well, now it's just a computer. You can get a computer and you can hey. sag all the songs you want and unlimited music if you think about it. And uh, but to pull out the CDs is going old school. And I love that he's done that. Has, Do you think still that's even that. more old school than the LPs? Well, uh, well, the, the fact that you have to yeah. pick out the song and find it and that sort of exactly. thing. But uh, the LPs would be going really old yeah. school uh, all together. And DJing is not as easy as no. you think. Uh, because they set the pace for everything. I mean, at, for or at least for a wedding, like a reception or any kind of celebration, if the, if the music's bad, <laughs> <trust me. laughs> We had good music, we because we were going up there saying, all right, now play this song, go play this song. And it was like, right, quit playing that song, play this song. We were in control. But you got to have the good music. Right. A DJ, a good DJ. A Makes good DJ, trust all me. All the difference in they, the world. Even if they <laughs> smell so good, don't get them at all. More Flash coming up after. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. You know, going to an electric vehicle, sure, it'll reduce the amount you pay for your gas, down to zero. Of course, what about that new proposed highway usage tax? Lauren Fix, the car coach, explains it all in today's Car Smarts. Gas versus hybrid versus electric cars. This is a question I get all the time. Which car is best for you? Well, there are some factors that you need to know. Initial costs are wildly different, and so are the yearly maintenance, car insurance, and fuel costs. To help you make the best decision for your family, for your wallet, the insurance site Zebra has put together some information that might help you. I've pared it down to make it a lot easier so that you can decide what's best for you. When it comes to gas cars, the average price of the 10 most common gasoline-powered cars in the United States has an average initial cost of $33,797. Electric cars average price is $66,997,000. The federal government and most states offer tax incentives to encourage people to purchase an electric vehicle, but make sure you qualify before you make that purchase. In addition to the purchase of an electric vehicle, you may also need to purchase charging equipment, which is not standard across all vehicles. Depending on the charging option you choose, you'll also need to install a charging station in your garage, which costs on average about $1,200 to purchase and install by a certified electrician. Hybrid cars have an average initial purchase price of $39,040. And if you purchase a plug-in hybrid model, you'll also need to buy a charging equipment and possibly install a charger in your home. Non-plug-in charge cars are a good option as they don't require this charger, and hybrids may qualify for a tax incentive to lower that initial cost. The major maintenance costs to gasoline vehicles are fluid changes and replacement parts, like batteries, brake pads, and spark plugs and tires. The most frequent maintenance for gasoline-powered vehicle is an oil change, which can range between $35 and $75, and the amount anywhere from $70 to $225 a year. 
Now, brake pads last about 40,000 miles, which can cost anywhere from $150 to $300 per axle, depending on your car. Now, maintenance for electric cars has some cost as well. Now, the battery pack is the biggest expense, which generally lasts about eight to 10 years. And most manufacturers provide a warranty on the battery pack for the first eight years or 100,000 miles. The cost of the battery will depend on your model needed and the current availability, but count on that costing about four figures. You'll also need to replace brake pads as in any other car. Fluids for any moving parts will be required maintenance as well. Now, the big expense for EVs are tires. They last about 30,000 to 40,000 miles before needing replacement. And the cost is about 250 to $400 per tire. Maintenance for hybrid cars? Well, hybrids have both an electric and an internal combustion engine, meaning they'll have all the same maintenance costs as both types, but you'll still need regular oil changes to replace parts like tires and brake pads. Now let's take a look at insurance costs. The national average car insurance premium is $1,529. The national average insurance premium for an electric car in 2022 was $2,280 a year. Generally, a hybrid car costs 7% more to insure than a gasoline-powered car. We've seen it as much as 50% higher. One tank of gas for a typical gasoline-powered car would cost about $58 and last about 350 miles on average, which amounts to roughly 17 cents a mile. For EVs, it either costs less, the same, or more to operate an electric vehicle compared to a gasoline engine car. And while that's not a very satisfying answer, an EV will probably reduce your true cost of getting around, albeit maybe not overnight. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and Daily Flash Show. Dot com. Thanks, Lauren. Well, this week's Furry Friends is a bit somber, but a celebration of life at the same time. The world has had to sadly say goodbye to the very good old boy Bobby at Bobby. the age of 31. Bobby, who lived in Portugal, was recognized by Guinness World Records as the oldest dog on Earth. Aww. The life expectancy of the Rafiero do Alejandro, did I say it right? Yeah, I think you did. Is that very good? Okay. Livestock guard dog was only 12 to 14 years. He nearly didn't make it, though, as a puppy. Uh, according to his human, Bobby was part of a litter of puppies born in 1992 that his parents decided to not keep because the family had enough animals on the property. Oh, wow. So they dug a hole and tossed the puppies in, but Bobby was hidden in a wood pile and kept a secret Whoa. until he was big enough for the family to accept him. His humans say the key to him, his longevity was due to a peaceful environment, good food, and hanging out with his feline friends, R.I.P. Bobby. Oh, sorry about that, Bobby. I mean, it, it, that's the thing. Like when you get a dog or you get a you get a big animal like that, it's it, it, it's a big thing to know that you only got about 12, 13 well, years with him, and then 31. They're gonna go away, and then the fact that he might not even made it anyway. Yeah. So there you go. It looks like that would be what I was. And also things. commuters got to pet a giraffe. Commuters on a busy highway in Australia caught a rare glimpse of a giraffe peeking out from an oversized trailer. Drivers through the south of Sydney were calling into morning radio shows to report a giraffe looking at them a from giraffe. the window of a trailer. So can you imagine how funny that'd be just rolling down the road and be like, what, what, is, what is this thing doing? So. I guess that there's only one ways you, ha you can move it and you gotta have a tall enough uh, truck to be able to do it. I mean, you just reach out and no. Pet the giraffe. Pet the giraffe is a good idea. <laughs> Just don't do it too much. People will start talking about you, all right? All right, we've got more Flash and more fun. Stick around. You're watching Daily Flash right here on Daily Flash. Where else? This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hello, everybody. According to my underwear, I'm Mitch English. <laughs> I'm Andre H. Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news well, and entertainment. I woke up one day and it said, man, do little. I'm like, I don't know how God is. On your that. underwear. Yeah, really we don't have to talk about work things oh, or, or okay. outside of work, work things. <laughs> okay, all right. We got a great show set up for you. Um, rest in peace, Stone Man Willie. Uh, Stone you're wondering Willie. who Stone Man yes. Willie is? Well, he's finally laid to rest. Okay, so back in eight, 1895, this guy, who was a pickpocketer, 
um, got put in jail and he died from liver cancer. He was an alcoholic and he died of liver cancer. Well, since he was a pickpocketer, they could never find out his name, right? Oh. Because he, he would not tell cops and he didn't have any ID on him or anything like that back then. So uh, he dies, they take him to the mortician. Mortician accidentally mummifies him, okay? Oh. And was trying some new procedures and wound up mummifying him. Well, Goodness. for 128 years, he is mummified, and if you look at this, he's still preserved really, really well. Really? Skin's a little leathery and such. So he's been in this uh, funeral home for quite some time, and they finally, they were allowed to keep him this long because they were studying the, the effects of this type of embalming. So apparently wow. it really works for 128 years. They finally said, I think we got everything that we need from it, so we're oh finally gonna put gosh. Stone Man Willie to uh, rest, and they, uh, the funeral home gave him a plot and they're gonna give him a casket really? and put him down. And, but they had him basically, not necessarily on display, but basically knowing that he was there so they could study him. He was on ice. He was on ice the whole time, just laying there. And uh, he looked, don't look too bad. He's a very wow. skinny man. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So, so rest in peace, Stone Man. Okay, so do we think we'll, we'll be seeing any of those embalming techniques used going forward? Well, for 128 years, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll go to Richards Hollywood first. Keith has been pulling it off pretty well. Yeah, exactly, you right? <laughs> he seems embalmed. <laughs> well, McDonald's reported its revenue was up 14% in the latest quarter. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, right. It surged. The burger giant said was driven by strategic menu price increases. The Golden Arches brought in more than $6 billion in revenue for one quarter, beating previous expectations. However, McDonald's, which has about 13,000 restaurants in the U.S. and over 38,000 across the globe, did not disclose how much they increased their franchising prices. Now, get this. One branch in Connecticut is charging 18 bucks for a Big Mac combo meal of fries a soft drink. Meanwhile, the same Big Mac combo will run you about 14 bucks at a McDonald's in Times Square. Many consumers say the recent spike in fast food prices no longer makes the fast casual food worth it. We are seeing this across the board. So not only are your groceries going up, but your fast food's taking a hit too. I think, and in, in more and more people, I think, are realizing, um, I think, home delivery too. You're not actually going yeah. to the restaurant, you know, so you, that, so imagine getting that $18 one plus yeah. the, uh, I'll, I'll pick out just Uber Eats, you know, yeah. but because the, there's a charge plus a tip that you're going, so you're talking about a good 20, I don't know, close to $30, I would imagine $25. For a Big Mac combo. For a Big Mac combo, just to have it delivered to your house. And uh, I think there was a time where all this was happening and then the, the value meals came out all mm -hmm. of a sudden. So I think we'll get to a point where they're gonna go, well look, sales are down because we rose, right, rose, we, took prices up, yeah. we're gonna have to do something in order to fix but, that. But the cost of doing business and all these, you know, uh, inflationary um, costs Measures when too. it comes to, uh, you know, the hourly rate that these folks are getting, especially to. in California, they have to raise the prices to, get, to keep up with it. And then automation will be a big thing too because they can't afford to pay a fast food worker 25 bucks an hour. I did the research and COVID, believe it or not, did not disappear from a lobby at 8 p.m. That's not why they closed it. They closed it because then that way they didn't have to have anybody out there monitoring or cleaning it up. And you're gonna start seeing that yeah. already. Places like Checkers or Rallies mm -hmm. or whatever, where it's just the building. If you want something, you'll go there. That's what I think it's gonna be. I don't like to discourage business, but at the same time, maybe it's not a bad thing that people back off these giant Big Mac combo meals. <laughs> I think you're right. You know, I mean, no, again, no, I think you're right. I, I don't want to discourage anybody from enjoying a Big Mac and a large drink. But when you look at the health of America across the board, maybe we've had a little bit too much of that. You know what my motivation would be? Is not paying $18 yeah. for it. And, yeah. you know, and look at cigarettes. Yeah. I think of the same yes. thing. They, the price of cigarettes went up, people quit smoking. Yeah. And, that was what made my dad quit after 30 years, was finally was like, 20 bucks a pack, I'm not doing this. And, and that was it. That was it. And your yeah. dad was Hank Hill, I didn't realize. He was, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, boy. <laughs> he, he called you sport all the time, right? Yeah, sport. Hey, sport. Yeah, it wasn't uh, propane accessories he was selling. Propane, propane accessories with a cigarette with uh, <laughs> near propane. Yeah. Loving all that. We're gonna go and do some reminiscing. However, this time it's gonna to be life love shopping style with this beautiful woman. Hey. We got that coming up around the corner. You're watching television's Daily Flash. Thanksgiving is just around the corner and Audrey McCullen, founder of MomGenerations.com, an online destination for mothers, is joining us with the scoop on how to gobble up some great deals this holiday. Morning, Audrey. Thanks for having me. Yes, Thanksgiving is right around the corner and all your essentials and needs you can get at BJ's Wholesale Club. They are your one-stop shop for everything that you're gonna need. I have this beautiful spread in front of me. Everything we have right here, we got at BJ's Wholesale Club from the turkey to the delicious produce. We have Wellesley Farms, carrots, green beans. We have these delicious frozen appetizers, desserts. Again, everything you need, you can get right there in one spot. Also too, you could get some seasonal plates and napkins. These are Berkeley Jensen, one of their exclusive brands, as is 
Wellesley Farms. And I just love the fact that you can save up to 25% off grocery store prices. I mean, that's an amazing deal anyway, just when you're doing your normal shopping, but especially during the holidays, especially during feasts and meals like this. You can also use manufacturer coupons. They're the only warehouse club that you could do that. So you're really able to stack those savings. But not only do you get that value, but it's also that convenience. You could shop in club, you could shop online, you could do curbside pickup, you could do pickup in club. And one of my favorites, same day delivery of your groceries. You could have your full Thanksgiving day meal delivered right to your front door in as little as two hours. And right now too, they have an amazing deal going on. When you spend $150 in one transaction, either online or in club, you can get a free Butterball Turkey. Now through November 9th, you wanna take advantage of this. Once you make your $150 transaction, you'll get a digital coupon that you will redeem November 11th through the 22nd while supplies last. It's so easy to redeem your coupon. All you have to do is head to your digital account, clip your coupon right there, and you can get your delicious Butterball Turkey. All the information is at bj's.com slash free turkey. And also holiday shopping, I know is on a lot of people's minds. And now November 17th, you're gonna start to see some Black Friday deals roll out. Toys, latest tech, make sure you check them out. It's a great way to get a jump start. So if you're not a member, make sure you become one. You can head to BJ's.com, do it right online, or you can head to any BJ's wholesale club near you, walk right on in, head to the membership center, and you can do it in person. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. If you live it, love it, or bite, we talk about it on Life Love Shopping. We kick things off with VIP subscriptions. Here's a question for you. Would you spend six grand a year on a dating app? Tinder has just launched a new ultra-exclusive dating experience via their app, but it's going to cost you $500 a month. It's called Tinder Select, and it will set you back about $6,000 a year. Take a look at some of these price increases. Spotify, the rumored price of $19.99, will get you the Supremium tier, which will allow advanced mixing tools and audiobooks. HBO Max now offers a premium plan of $19.99, an extra $10 above their entry-level plan. Hulu is raising its package for Hulu, Hulu Live TV, ESPN, and Disney Plus to $89.99. Its low-end price with ads is $7.99. Netflix is also charging $19.99 a month for their ad-free version. $7.99 if you want the entry-level plan. Even Peloton is raising its prices to $24 a month for an exclusive subscription plan that includes special classes, access to other programs, and challenges. Now, baking soda has been known to ease indigestion. No research to prove this stomach acid test is accurate. Doctors say low stomach acid can be treated with vitamins like iron and calcium or hydrochloric supplements. Well, with all the recent attention on charged lemonade, we thought we would take a closer look at a few unassuming health drinks loaded with caffeine. This is according to the Daily Mail. First up, Clean Cause by Yerba Mate is advertised as a low-cal beverage with energy-boosting properties. It only has 70 calories, but the natural caffeine in it equals nearly two cups of coffee. Odyssey 222 is called a sparkling elixir with green tea, ginseng, and mushrooms. Its 12-ounce can contains as much caffeine as three small Starbucks lattes. By Boost, a juice made with caffeinated tea leaves. Despite being branded as a juice, it has three times the caffeine as a cup of tea or more than an eight-ounce cup of coffee. And Gorgie is sold as an energy drink with benefits. A closer look at the label and you'll see it contains 150 milligrams of caffeine. Welcome back to Daily Flash. If you're looking to impress the man in your life, look no further. Yes, we got something they will definitely love, because I know I'm going to. It's mm -hmm. a beer cheese dip. Chef Yvonne joins us in the Daily Flash kitchen to show us mm -hmm. how we actually put this all together. And there's some uh, ingredients you might have to go do a little shopping for, but everybody's saying this is worth it, though, right? Uh, here's what you're going to need. Probably already have a lot of this anyway. Butter, uh, chopped onion, you're going to need some flour. Of course, you need some beer, an IPA is what you're going to need. Some half and half, some fontina cheese, some cheddar cheese, some Dijon, and some Worcestershire sauce, chives, black pepper, all the garnish. But 
we got all that together. How do we put it together? Yes. Mm. Well, this is actually a very easy recipe to make your uh, beer cheese, if you like it. Um, I actually didn't know it was that easy. You have a bechamel base, so I don't know if you guys have heard that. I'm not, it's, no. uh, Bechamel is uh, milk, cream uh, yeah, and cream flour, and right? flour, yeah, butter wow. and flour. So, Impressive. and you Did just um, you just whisk that. Um, and in this case, instead of uh, the milk, you um, substitute that with the beer. Okay. Now, are you going to taste the beer in this? I mean, is it th yes. that powerful? Yes. You do taste the beer, especially if you go with an IPA. So this recipe in particular calls for an IPA. Personally, I am not a fan of IPA, so but, so that's a pre preference thing. So could you use any kind of beer? Yes, I oh. would say, so Guinness is what I would oh. also heard, recommend. Oh, yeah. really? There's actually uh, books out with just Guinness uh, recipes, recipes, where it's just uh, Guinness. Yes. Now, once you get, you just throw everything into a bowl and mix yeah, it up so, and you're done? Yeah, just follow the recipe. The recipe calls to, it's just, um, the, the key here is to incorporate gradually every ingredient. Okay. What about time, Yvonne? Is this, is this it quick? Is, is it? Yeah, exactly. It's okay. a, Easy recipe with uh, just a few ingredients, and then uh, to make, it's not more than seven minutes. All right. I so if you're expecting friends over for a party, this mm -hmm. might be the last thing that you make before everybody comes yes, over. Yes, to make sure okay. it's hot. And speaking of hot, why don't we go and taste it? Uh, okay. Well, I'm all for that. Now, you, you brought pretzels. Can yes. you dip anything with these? Or? Yeah, you can. Yeah, your finger's the best. Do you want a I'm nugget? Or, I'll, I'll, do I'll, that. I'll do a no, nugget. So, a nugget. so uh, you can go with pretzels. Okay. You can go with crackers, bread. Um, again, that's a preference thing. Okay. Now, okay. I also can see, like, if you're going to have a party, uh, maybe put this in the crock pot and put it on warm, where it stays warm throughout the mm. night. Yeah. Yes, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, I definitely recommend that because it does get um, okay, yeah. cool fast. And if when it's hot, you'll see, because of that fun Tina, those strings of cheese, um, they go a long way. So. Yeah, don't, don't double dip, by the way. But you totally can taste the yeah. IPA in that. Yeah. I mean, yes. like, it, it's almost Strong. like the first thing you taste. Usually, yeah. it's sometimes mm -hmm. it's like an afterwards thing. This is great for those that maybe you might be getting a uh, tailgate season that's coming yep. up. This would be great to keep it out there. And as I said, you can keep it warm outside by just mm -hmm. hooking up a crock mm -hmm. pot to it. So, Mitch, I have to ask you, are you impressed? Let me try one more time. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we're yeah, going to have this episode, this episode, <laughs> this recipe, episode, this Rep recipe on. on our website, dailyflushshow.com. Well, fall is here, and that means it's time to refresh, update, and upgrade when it comes to heating and cooling. Here's HGTV's Chip Wade with more. Hi, Chip Wade here, DIY expert with some great tips for this fall. These colder weathers often can shorten your vehicle's battery lifespan. I recommend investing in a battery maintainer or a trickle charger to keep those batteries topped off. Now is the time of year to change your air filter in your car. More at Napa Auto Parts or NapaOnline.com. For the DIYers out there that love spray texture but don't enjoy doing it, DAP 2-in-1 wall and ceiling spray texture is a revolution with this new patent pending 60 degree adjustable nozzle or at DAP Com. Up to 90% of homes are actually under insulated, and that's why it's a great idea to insulate with Owens Corning Pink Next Gen Fiberglass Insulation, and you could qualify for up to $1,200 tax credit. Check out more at owenscorning.com. Last up, it's football season, and Lowe's has NFL licensed Valspar paint for all 32 NFL teams. You can find out more at lowes.com slash home team. Thank you there, Chip. Experts say Americans suffer from a billion colds each year. Family physician Dr. Leslie Gonzalez joins us today to help you get prepared for cold flu and cough season. Hey there, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you for having me. Today, we're talking about cold, cough, and flu season. To help the little ones transition to bedtime, I recommend solutions with effective and wholesome ingredients like calming chamomile and natural honey, which can be found in Zarbi's Children's Gentle Bedtime Products. What's great is they come in multiple formats like a melatonin-free gummy and a syrup. But sometimes despite our best efforts, our kids still get sick. If your child is experiencing a fever, there are two key ingredients that can reduce a fever, acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Acetaminophen can be found in medicines like children's Tylenol or infant's Tylenol. Ibuprofen can be found in children's and infant's Motrin. In addition to reducing a fever, children's Motrin can relieve minor aches and pains and it lasts up to eight hours. And for adults, just like kids, if you're experiencing a fever, consider acetaminophen or ibuprofen. For fast pain relief, I like to recommend Tylenol rapid release gels, which contain acetaminophen. If you're experiencing a runny nose and sneezing, sometimes we aren't sure if it's from a cold or allergies. Allergy symptoms usually fur up when you're exposed to allergens that you're most sensitive to and cause symptoms such as itchy eyes, nose, or throat. 
Make sure to pay attention to when you experience the symptoms so you can identify the allergens that bother you. The good news is the ingredient diphenhydramine can relieve a runny nose or sneezing, whether from allergies or the common cold. This effective allergy and cold relief can be found in Benadryl allergy ultra tabs, which are effective day or night. Also, look for a decongestant like pseudoephedrine that targets sinus pressure and congestion. This can be found in products like Certic D and Sudafed Sinus Congestion. You can find them behind the pharmacy counter. For more information on ingredients, dosing, and tips to make the most of your health, you can go to healthinhand.org. With the new year less than eight weeks away, it's a great time to start planning those 2024 vacations. Here's some insider advice about one of the world's hottest travel destinations. Italy, it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, and it might even be on your vacation bucket list. No travel expert understands Italy's magic quite like Steve Perillo, the president and owner of Perillo Tours. He's here with some tips for your Italian getaway. If you go between November and March, you're going to save a lot of money. The weather's cool and sunny. It's the best touring weather, and uh, you could save a fortune on airfare and hotel. With an influx in international travel post-pandemic, it can be challenging to book a trip. Steve says that it's becoming difficult to get tickets to sites like the Vatican or to the Colosseum. That's why he suggests reaching out to travel experts to help map out your dream vacation. The best way to set up a trip to Italy is to uh, start doing research online, see what you like, and then uh, call for the assistance of a travel advisor or a tour operator or a packager because you can do these on your own, but it's getting harder and harder. To learn more, visit PerilloTours.com. Well, stay with us. Still more to come here on Daily Flash. Head to the website for this amazing beer cheese uh, recipe. All right, Daily Trump. Flash Show. Get, come on, JC, get out of here. <laughs> Welcome back to Daily Flash. A housekeeper brings her son to help clean a wealthy family's home. Her employers invite her to shelter in their house until a crisis blows okay. over. As the days pass, interactions between all of them become more intense. This is today's must-watch movie, At the Gates. Aquí vive? Mm-hmm. Está bien grande esta casa. Estate bien hoy. Nico, thank you for helping today. I'm Marianne Barris. Thanks for letting me come work here. Have you explained the rules? Peter doesn't want anyone going into his office. Yes, he won't be any trouble. Dining window, open. Patio door, open. Anna, why don't you and your son just go in the guest bedroom? The officers that came to the gate work for immigration. If you were to try to leave, they're likely waiting for you out on the street. We have a space in the basement. But we need your cell phones to make sure they stay off. Arreglaron todo esto en tan poco tiempo. Sí, ¿y qué pasa? Porque está todo armado como si ya nos estuvieran esperando. ¿Y por qué solamente la puerta se abre por afuera? Hey, were you and your former housekeeper close? She lived with us. What happened? My mom could be pretty demanding. She ended up quitting. You never saw her again? No. What are you doing? You could not come into my office. Nico, we can't just be up here like this. It's important that children see we treat people like you with respect. Do you want to get separated from your mom? We're committing a crime. This is a crime scene. I don't know how much it's about you, but I feel like I've failed. Mom, they're back. They're at the gate. I'm not failing. We're going to be fine. I never learned how to read, so I don't know if I'll catch that movie with the subtitles. <laughs> but anyway, well, there's some subtitles for you. These are the folks yes. that make this show so great. We appreciate it. We thank you. More importantly, you make our show so great by sp spending time with us. Yeah, for more information on all of today's stories, be sure to visit dailyflashshow.com. We will see you back right here. Same time, same place. Y'all take care. Be good or good at it, and we'll see when we look at you. Wait, bye, everybody. Well, bye, everybody. Go. Hi, Hugo. Hugo, wait. <laughs>